President Bola Metunubu tolerating selective injustice against Igbos. Aloy Ijimako alleges. Aloy Ijimako, the lead counsel of Namde Kano, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, has accused President Bola Tinubu of tolerating selective injustice against Igbos. He claimed that Igbos suffered less of selective injustice under the Paris administration of the former president, Olusegu Obarasanjo and Gulog Jonathan, but picked in Muhammad Buhari's time. Posting on X, Ijima wrote, what is now emerging in the open, thanks to social media, as institutionalized selective injustice against Indigo has always been there. It reduced silently or slightly under OBJ and J E uh J Gulog Jonathan peaked a new high under President Muhammad Buhari and has attained genocidal proportions shocking that Tinubu tolerated. People of the Southeast have severely alleged marginalized a situation that fueled the agitation for Biafra. Tinubu tolerating selective injustice against Igbo, like uh, lawyer Ijima Kaur uh, ladies. You see, when people keep on saying one particular thing, you know, I think it's the best thing to look into what they are talking about. Southeasterners, they have continually talking about this uh, marginalization, you know, in the southeast or against the Ebers. So why can't this why can't this issue be resolved? This is really surprising, you know, and it's really maybe it's really playing out with what is going on. The other day, the president of Middlebirds uh, uh, Forum, Dr. Brutus, said something. He said the Northerners suddenly want to leave Nigeria. He said, but when their brothers, that is the Igbos, you know, declared Biafra nation, the Northerners, they messed them up. So they fought them. Why did they say they want to leave Nigeria? Now suddenly they want to leave Nigeria. So he's not saying. And the Middle Belt will not be part of that too. The Middle Belt will still stay in Nigeria. He said, because. They, he doesn't want the situation whereby they are going to be referred as second-class citizen. Because since that Biafra war, that is how Nigeria see Indigo as second-class citizen. That didn't touch me. So that means what these people are talking about is true. So they are, they are being seen as second-class citizen. And when you watch what happened during presidential election. You will just hear people say, eh, Peter B is a nice person, and eh, Peter B becomes Nigerian president, things will change, but he cannot be president of Nigeria. Why? Because of his background, he's an Igbo man. That is just a crime. That is just the only crime you pushed out a good man, because he's an Igbo man. And the question is, Igbos, are they not Nigeria? Okay, if they are being uh classified as second class citizen that means you are not send them why do you still want them to be here why the marginalization why all these things now nigerians don't they still they talk this woman went talk with him she talk for canada though what he said is really very condemnable nobody will just say what is she talk they okay that is really very wrong you understand, for her to make such a statement against your people, no matter how it is, uh -huh. if you die abroad, you see Nigeria from a Nigerian from the north, from the anywhere, Una go behave like say Una be the same family because you, you are coming from the same country. You understand, that statement is wrong. I'm going to somewhere. Now, immediately she made that statement. House of Representatives reacted. People, they react left, right, and center. Nigerian government reacted. 
even to the extent of going to report her down there in Canada. But people have made statements more than that here in Nigeria. Nothing was done. Today, President uh, Senator Remy Tunubu is President Bolame Tunubu's wife. That is Nigerian president. 2022, she made statements against the Igbos. She made, that is insightful statements. The Igbos will go drive the commute and take over their work. She makes those kind of statements. And till today, she never still apologizes. Today they are there. After she made that statement, 2023, boom. Because somebody has already led the way. I am just talking about statement. I'm not talking about other things like uh, position in politics and all that. I just they talk about this very one now. When we say with the see I'm kuro kuro, see me see you like this. I, I don't want to go about the reason why all the, all the, the agitations in the southeast region and all that. I not just want to go about that. I'm just talking about it. Um, Asari Dokubo have made statements. It go buy Igbo. And nothing go happen. After all, Igbo still use them as slaves like in forefather did. Who call them out? Even when uh, uh, Oriwa asked President Bola Metunubu government at least to interrogate him, make him make apology for waiting he talk. Nobody did that. By Ononoga, today is President Bola Metunubu's aid. Even when he made statements like Igbo should leave, they should leave Lagos. He asked Igbo to leave Lagos. He said more than, more than whatever. Even when they told him what he said is wrong, say wait till you talk, you are sorry. He said no, he stand by his words. Are we talking about Femi Fani Kayaudi? MC Olomo. How many will I talk? What of this recent one that was, you know, trying to push protest against Igbo must go in Lagos? They know the person will get the account. You can pitch your data everywhere. What did the Nigerian government do? But when they say that they don't wear around, they don't they act fast. I think that is why they are still saying they are being marginalized. What of Mazikna and the Kano? We have seen people who had the same uh, charge, you know, levied against them by the Nigerian government. The government have freed them. But Mazikna and the Kano is still there. Even when they say this is the cause problem for their region, the government no one care. It's none of their business. So if they are saying this, 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 and that, maybe they have their reasons why they are saying all this. All these things should be looked into. If we are saying we are one Nigeria, if not, so what is the need of preaching one Nigeria? Why we don't practice it? So guys, are they dropping for you? All right, share your thoughts below the comment section. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. Share this video. Let it go viral. Thank you. And bye.